Ni huevo vale fuera ya. Cafua va barata. Huevo un foco de la cuabantú. Casa mayúti, vos se va a chingar, me va a curar una banda. Vos se va a chingar, tan a banda, vaya, vale, ni la ve muapa. Casa mayúti, fuera ya, y huevo, y le huevo, y si muapa. Lenta experiencia. Hola, cane, huevo, vamos a baima nuevo. Vos se va a casa, vale, fuera ya, vamos a baima nuevo. of energy recently announced in parliament that the country will be facing load shedding of up to six hours a day beginning thursday 15th december 2022 we think that this is totally unnecessary because the power that this country has is sufficient to see us through even with the difficulties that kariba dam is going through of low water levels until march the Patriotic Front government invested in, for the first time in the last 50 years, in generation of electricity. It upgraded small power stations and even built new ones. We upgraded a small power station, Lunzua in Mpulungu, which was supplying just the Zambia Air Force in Imbala and the outbound facilities for ZNS and, and, and other facilities and Mpulungu town. Now that is at 15 megawatts, which we are even exporting to the East Africa power pool, exporting to Tanzania, you know, uh, and giving their, their town, I think, Sumbawanga, that power. If you come to Kasama, we have Chishimba Force. Again, it was a small power station. It's been upgraded. If you come to Luapula, which in some cases was on, on um, uh, power generation, was on these diesel uh, uh, generators like Kaputa, these were upgraded. They are all on the national grid, and Musonda Force is supplying Luapula and the DRC sufficiently. We invested, especially in Northwestern Province. You remember that Northwestern Province only had Solwezi and Kasempa on the national grid. The rest of the towns, up to Zambezi, whether it was Mwinilunga, Mwembeji, all those towns up to Zambezi were all on diesel generators. We've now upgraded them, installed transmission lines, and they are all on national grid. And the investment we did on Kafue is uh, remarkable. We started at Iteji Teji, where a joint venture with Tata, you know, we are generating up to 120 megawatts on Kafue itself, the original Kafue Gorge power station. Now the new one, the one that is supposed to produce 750 megawatts and is doing 600, the Kafue Gorge lower. There were investments that we did, even on Kariba, we upgraded it. Um, we made new uh, you know, machine installations on Kariba North Bank and even Kariba uh, South Bank. So the country has sufficient power. Why is Zesco announcing this load shedding? It's because of the export commitment that they have. They're exporting power to Namibia. Let's start recently, you saw the managing director of Zesco signing an agreement with his counterpart from Namibia Pool, Nampu, 
where he says, besides the 100 megawatts that we've been supplying Namibia, that they'll give them an additional 80 megawatts. This is supposed to earn us up to $50 million a year. You saw the managing director again sign agreements with Zimbabwe, where they are giving Zimbabwe dedicated power of up to 100 megawatts. You saw that Zesco is exporting power to Botswana, to South Africa, to ESCOM, and it has its traditional exports to Malawi and Tanzania, and sorry, and uh, DRC. To Malawi, we can cancel that out because we exchange power. We give Malawi power, and also Malawi does supply some of our towns like Lundazi and Chama uh, power from Malawi. So there we cancel off. You see that if you look at what we generate and the capacity we have as Zambia of 3,456 megawatts, and our peak use that we need is 2,300, you realize that you don't need to load shed our people, even if Kariba is down. The only reason Zambia will be load shedded is to fulfill these contractual obligations to the Southern Africa Power Pool and at bilateral level to ESCOM or to Namibia, to Botswana, to, to, to DRC. And we think that ZESCO should drastically reduce its exports, maybe to marginal levels, to ensure that Zambians do not go through what they went through in 2015 in 2016, in 2019, when we suffered some of the worst uh, drought period, especially the 2015. You're all aware that the reason we have these difficulties is that our biggest dams are all in the south, which is obviously affected now by climate change and by the droughts, and you have to wait for power to run through the Zambezi or Kafiwe or Luangwa to fill our dams, and it's imperative therefore, that we begin to make fresh investment in areas where we have a lot of water. Remember Zambia has up to 40% of water in Southern Africa. So our new investment, we are targeting Batoka, a joint venture with Zimbabwe, where we produce 2,400 megawatts. In my view, our focus should be where we have a lot of water, Northwestern province, Luapula, and Northern province. I'm aware that there is a program on Luapula where we are supposed to do a new power station to do 1,200 megawatts. That is prudent because you know the climate of Luapula, you know the amount of water that Luapula has, and that investment you know it outlasts even these climate changes that we are suffering. Uh, there are a few concerns around ZESCO. The new managing director has created a superstructure at ZESCO. First, his position was not advertised. He was just appointed. And he has proceeded to upgrade his own position to a far higher position than what his previous managing directors have held. Then he has upgraded the positions of the directors to his former position of managing directors. This is for conditions of service. So the directors at Zesco now are earning what the managing director used to earn while the managing director has upgraded himself to a higher position. We think that this is careless, this is dangerous, this, this is um, not prudent expenditure. Zesco is a state-owned enterprise. Zesco is owned by the Zambian people. It's not a looting party where government after government go to Zesco to loot the resources of Zesco. What is the state of Zesco? Zesco currently is debt laden. This is because of the investment it has been doing in its um, hydropower stations like Kafiwa Gorge Lower, like uh, the one at uh, Itejiteji, like the upgrades we've been doing, you know, in Chinsali, Lunzua, Lusiwasi in Serenje, Lunzua in Impulungu, Chinsali, Musonda Force um, in Luapula. All these investments required a lot of money. Then remember how the transmission lines and the interconnectors for us to export power were also upgraded. Some of the major transmission lines that were upgraded include the one from uh, Pensulo in Serenje up to Kasama. This was to upgrade it from, I think, a 66 uh, 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 um, 
KV line to an industrial line that requires that we can export and that businesses in northern Luapula could you know, be set up without instability in the power lines. The same line again was upgraded f from um, uh, uh, Pensulo to Msoro to Chipata again to ensure that our exports to Malawi, to Mozambique and that the power instability for industries in Eastern Province was done. Similarly, we upgraded the Kafiwe to Livingstone transmission line for the very reasons that you need to have industrial uh, entities set up across Kafiwe, Mazabuka, you know, up to Choma, up to Livingstone. These investment required a lot of money and we borrowed heavily from China, from the European Investment Bank and other financial institutions. So Zesco, we should agree, is debt laden. Then there's another way Zesco is accumulating an unsustainable debt. This is through independent power producers. These independent power producers, whether it's Mamba Power, whether it's Indeni, you know, uh, sorry, whether it's Indola Energy, that would get its uh, uh, crude heavy oils from Indeni, whether it's Lunsemfwa, whether it's these new solar power projects, the PV projects, Zesco is buying this power far higher than it is selling to you, to me, and to the mining sector. So Zesco is literally subsidizing these independent power supplies. And every month it requires $40 million to pay off the power it's been buying from these entities. So Zesco has gone into debt. That's one of the biggest local debt. And to resolve all this, the Energy Regulation commissioned a study, the cost of service study. How much does it cost for Zesco to produce power? How much does it cost for Zesco to transmit that power and then distribute it to the customers? How much does it cost for Zesco to set up all these prepaid meters across the country? So a study, comprehensive study was done. The study results are out, they were published by Energy Regulation Board and the Zambian government, uh, where these results were tabled before cabinet and cabinet responded to the cost of service study through what we call a green paper. Both documents are available on government uh, uh, websites and the Energy Regulation Board. What were the key findings? Like I said, that Zesco is debt ridden. Uh, the tariffs are quite low. They've recommended that Zesco should be increasing tariffs of up to 17% a year for the next five years for Zesco to be uh, sustainable. What is the issue again with Zesco management? That the structure was top heavy, top, uh, top laden, and that it was unsustainable. It wasn't efficient. It was overstaffed. And then investment required in the infrastructure. Zesco has done very well in the industrial transmission lines, but it is yet to upgrade its distribution lines to townships, to you and me and to areas, especially the rural areas. But there is one major finding in relation to Zesco that has, for me, uh, 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 alerted me that this Zesco management is not even aware of what government is saying about Zesco. He's not even aware of the cost of service study. He's not even aware of the recommendations of what needs to rescue this power utility, one of the biggest in Africa. The issue of cost optimization, how much does it cost you to generate this power distributed and how much does it cost to run Zesco? And then you have a managing director who comes and creates these superstructures. He upgrades his own position. He creates new position. Each director has two deputies. And the directors are upgraded to his former position of managing director for purposes of conditions of service. So the managing director is, is on a level which he is calling M0. Then the directors are at M1, his previous position. Then the deputy directors are at M2, where the position of the directors were. Then senior managers like that, up to M5. And sadly, all these positions have been created without proper approval. He has employed people in this position, especially the 18 deputy directors, without a single advert to the Zambians. 
Zambians have a right to occupy a position at Zesco. Qualified staff have a right to be employed at Zesco. That is a company that is a, com a company owned by the country. And Zesco Managing Director has done none of that. He has created this new position, a big superstructure, without recourse to the law, without recourse to IDs, IDC. And that's why my call is to the president, who's chair of IDC. My call is to the minister of energy. How have you allowed this bloated structure at Zesco? How has the president allowed such a superstructure when the president has been preaching prudence, when the president has been uh, preaching cost-saving measures of an efficient management? How has he allowed this abuse of resources at Zesco? For me, these are very serious matters. Lastly, on the issue of uh, debt that Zesco has, the bulk of it is with independent power producers. As discussed, Zesco has been directed to manage this, renegotiate um, the tariff structure because it's, it's, they are unsustainable. Zesco cannot manage paying these few companies $40 million a month. And this brings us to the last item on CEC and Zesco. They recently announced uh, in glorious form that they have now agreed and signed a bulk supply agreement where Zesco will be giving this power to uh, Copper Belt Energy Corporation and Copper Belt Energy then supplies to the mines. But this deal, like the previous one, is unfair. We are urging on the president, on Zesco, on Minister of Energy, to announce and disclose the details of the bulk supply agreement. Why is our concern? What is our concern? Our concern is very simple. CEC is co-owned by people that are cabinet ministers and those associated with the current president. We do not want Zesco to be looted using this structure. We do not want Zesco to be looted and locked in for a period of 20 years or 25 years or 15 years on unfair tariff structure with CEC. Government has an obligation to announce the details of this new power supply agreement. So a recap, there is no need there is totally no need for, uh, for load shedding. Totally no need. We have sufficient power as demonstrated by the number of power stations. We've upgraded by the number, by the uh, amount of power that this country has. Even if there is low water levels at Kariba, there is no need for, for load shedding because we have sufficient power. What should government and ZESCO do? Cut down on those exports. Cut those exports. Uh, a recap on Zesco, the management is blotted, the managing director has created illegal positions, has upgraded himself and his directors to unsustainable levels. There is a call through the, uh, the new study that was done to show that Zesco must be run prudently. It must optimize on its costs. It should not be wasteful. So the wasteful expenditure occurring at Zesco must come to an end. There is need for the uh, bulk supply agreement between Zesco and CEC to be published. We need to know, especially that CEC's shareholding has some of personalities that are close to cabinet, are close to the president, and we want to take, uh, we want to make sure that CEC is not abused, that CEC is not locked into an unfair agreement with Zesco that it benefits more than Zesco does. Besides, it's Zesco that generates this power. And with those few remarks, uh, countrymen, ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. God uh, bless our country. Our country can prosper. There's no need for our country to be poor. While it's a wealth, resourceful country, there's no need for our country to be poor and for our young people to be unemployed. It can be done. We can do it better. So until next time, God bless you and see you then.
Bye, Manuel. Oh.